Now the feature that we're going to be looking at is a shop for a crypto project that I work on that allows you to swap a centralized uh, kind of token uh, that isn't on the blockchain for a token that is on the blockchain. Now if that doesn't mean anything to you, that's absolutely fine. This is more just about understanding the use case of how as a product manager, you can get the most out of these AI tools to help you speed up your workflow and you know make decisions quicker uh, and get the information that you need before you go and speak to the engineering team. Um, so here, I've just basically posed it the question, I want to write a program that let users redeem coins that are centralized to my software for an ERC20 token. ERC20 just means a blockchain token. How could I do this? So uh, ChatGPT outputs me the, the high level steps. It's, you know, it says you know, that I would need to set up a smart contract um, and I would then need to have a way for the users to interact with it, maybe through MetaMask. Um, and then I would need to have a function on the smart contract that would let users uh, you know, claim uh, the tokens for these uh, centralized coins. And then it says you know, some uh, stuff about other features that I might need. Now, this is the process with ChatGPT. Uh, often it won't uh, give you exactly what you want first time. And to be honest, usually that's because you haven't put in uh, the absolute best uh, description of, of what it is that you're looking for. So here I've put, okay, this is good, but you've kind of misunderstood my question. Uh, it stood, what this thought was that I had two ERC20 tokens that I wanted to swap. Uh, and actually what's happening is I need one of these tokens to not exist on the blockchain at all and just would be part of that central API. So I asked, you know, if I could do that and if I could do it as part of the central API and for it not to be a, a blockchain transaction. And it says, yes, it is possible to do that. And it basically goes through, uh, you know, this, this, the same steps. Um, but here it gives me a, you know, a slightly different point for point three, where it's saying that I should write a function in the central API that allows users to redeem their centralized coins for ERC20 tokens. This function should check that the user has a sufficient balance of centralized coins. And if they do call the appropriate function of the smart contract to issue the user the corresponding amount of ERC20 tokens. So this was the key bit here. This is actually, you know, the mechanism. All of this other stuff is, you know, just, just standard bits that, that you would um, that you would expect. So then I asked it to give me an example of a function for point three. Um, and here it's actually output a bit of code that we could use. Uh, and we can see that here it's checking the user's balance, throwing an error if the balance isn't sufficient, and then interacting with the token API to then transfer the token from the uh, rewards contract or the contract where the ERC20 token is held into the one that you need. Um, so this is kind of interesting. Uh, and then, you know, this is something that you could kind of have a look into, dig into a bit more, understand. You could ask it more about the different functions that you could use. You could ask it to optimize it. There's loads of stuff here. I'm not a developer, so, you know, I can roughly read this stuff, but, you know, it's not my, not my bag at all. Um, and then I asked if there was any vulnerabilities. Obviously, when you're working with smart contracts, you always need to be aware of that. I actually didn't agree with the answer that it gave me here um, because you're swapping a, you know, you're basically just claiming a token. You're not doing a swap. Uh, it's not really applicable. Um, but I don't know, it could be, you know, I probably could have dead, uh, dug into that a little bit more. So the next question I asked them is, right, we've got this way for the user to claim the tokens from their you know, centralized uh, coin on our software platform. But how do I actually get our clients to add these coins in the first place that are gonna be redeemed to users through our centralized uh, coin? And you know, I asked this question, pretty complex question to be honest, uh, and it's given me you know, a number of different ways that that, that, that could be done. Uh, and it's given me two uh, different options. So here I've said, you know, do I want a single contract for all the rewards or do I want separate contracts for each of those reward pools? And again, it's, you know, outputted me pros and cons of both, which is kind of similar. Uh, you know, I think in this instance, I would go with the separate rewards contract just because it's, it's a bit safer. Um, you know, you haven't got all of your uh, tokens held in one place. Um, and then here's where it gets, uh, you know, kind of crazy. I think often as product managers, we seem to think that our work is, uh, you know, in some ways, some of the highest leverage work that's been done. You know, it's easy for us to imagine coders being replaced or, you know, developers being replaced because, you know, there'll be languages that will turn 
me writing stuff like this into code, which you can see here. Uh, but what about the actual intellectual work of you know, scoping out a feature and understanding you know, what needs to be done? Um, I don't know, maybe we think that this is gonna be uh, harder to replace, but I asked it here to actually write out some product requirements for that feature that I've just described. And here it's given me out, you know, a fairly generic but important product requirements. And to be honest, I'm going to be using this a lot more to put in uh, the kind of basis of a feature and output product requirements, not necessarily to just take them as a given, but just to understand if there's anything that I've missed. I, you know, I used to work for uh, a marketplace platform and I would always forget when I was writing the acceptance criteria and the product requirements for a story about customer support and how they're going to deal with things and you know how uh, you know this feature might impact them and if I can use a tool like ChatGPT which is going to help me think about every single stakeholder when I'm writing these requirements uh, that's just going to be a massive a massive win for me. Um, so yeah, probably going to do another video on that in the future, specifically around product requirements. But uh, this is, I think, a very interesting use case of ChatGPT for product managers. Uh, and then I asked, you know, can I do this without storing private keys? Because it said here that the, the system is recommended that we would want to store it, and that's just absolutely something that if you're running a crypto project, you really don't want to do. Uh, there's a, you know, you have to put a lot of security infrastructure in place uh, in order to be able to do that. And then it said, yeah, of course you can. You can just use MetaMask, which is a, um, you know, a, a decentralized uh, kind of Web3 uh, provider, which would allow the users to sign transactions without us needing their, their private keys. Um, and then the final thing that I asked is, okay, we want to build all of this, but we're limited by Strapi is the product that we use for our content management system. And I wanted to know if we could make this work with the tooling that we have provided. And again, this is a very specific example, but I'm sure you can think of, you know, maybe you're, you've got a WordPress site and, you know, something that you want to put up there. Uh, that you don't know if it's compatible, you can literally just ask ChatGPT and it's going to give you an output of whether or not that is possible. And often being a product manager, I think a lot of it is just knowing, is this possible? You know, can I do this? And ChatGPT does a really good job of, I think, telling you like, actually, yeah, theoretically, this is possible. Uh, and then it's up to you to then speak to the developers, understand the, the work involved and then prioritize it accordingly. So yeah, hopefully you found that useful. I think it was, you know, a weird video in some ways because it went into a, you know, a lot of the weeds of a specific feature, but I think it's probably one of the best ways um, to outline, you know, exactly how this works uh, and how I'm using it as a, as a product manager. So thanks a lot for your time and uh, yeah, subscribe if you want to see these videos more. I'm going to be diving into how I'm using ChatGPT to really optimize my workflow in terms of writing, uh, doing product management stuff, even design. So yeah, follow along and uh, see you next time.